Hi, my name's Anthony Ward and welcome to this workshop for 3D World magazine. What we're going to look at throughout the next few videos is basically my process for adding hair and fur to this Easter Bunny character. Now rather than using N hair or Maya's uh, traditional fur tools, I'm going to be using XGen. Now those of you who aren't familiar with XGen, it's a new suite of tools which came into Maya in, with the extension release of 2014. Now these tools were originally developed by Disney Animation Studios uh, for films like Tangled and Toy Story and a few others. Um, and what they basically do is take a series of objects or an object and repeat that over the surface of another object. Um, these, uh, these duplicates are basically instances of the original. Um, what you can then do is use the tools built into XGen to add variety, to pose these instances. So in effect, you're only using one object, but Maya is repeating this object, basically just re-displaying it number of, a number of times over an object. Um, so it's a really nice workflow. It's, uh, it's pretty quick to set up. Um, and as you'll see throughout this video, it's quite easy uh, to get some good results. So if you're looking at this scene now, she's looking a bit different to the render that came with the magazine. And that's because what I've done is I've stripped down the scene just so we're working on the very basics here. And that is just to help with performance and just so that you're not bogged down or distracted by anything else in the scene. The main thing is we've got the bunny in there and we're going to add fur and hair to her throughout this workshop. So the first thing we need to do is let's just switch to our perspective view so we can zoom in a little bit. So here we have our bunny character. She currently doesn't have any fur, she's got a very basic texture on her. Now when we come to apply fur to her, traditionally when you use N hair or fur, you do need to have a good set of UV layout onto the model that you're using. Now with XGen, it doesn't use your UVs. You basically select the geometry and then uh, XGen will apply the instances to that model. Now the way it does this is it, it relies more on the PTEX system of uh, generating UVs. So it doesn't matter what your UVs are on your model because XGen will generate its own and use its own and output its own set for you which is a lot easier than you having to mess about and trying to relax your UVs and get them to uh, to look and work really well. Now, we're going to be applying fur to the whole body, but obviously there are areas which we don't really want the fur, like beneath her dress, her lips don't want fur, and these bits inside her ears, maybe her claws and nails as well. So what you need to do first is go through and select the polygons that you're going to apply the fur to. Uh, before I do that, it's quite important that I just mention. Now, when you're using XGen, you could, we're using this uh, character and she's already posed. Now you could use her in the traditional T pose and that would make your life a bit easier because what you could do is work on one half of her and then you can, using XGen has a tool which allows you to flip the work you've done on her left side over to the right, so mirror the work that you've done. Now that's a way of speeding up your workflow. You can then pose her afterwards using joints or blend shapes or a rig, and XGen will update as she animates. Now I've not chosen to do that in this particular instance. Because she's posed, and this is just for an illustration, I want to have the fur slightly different on either side. So I want to have the flexibility um, of just working on on her as a whole rather than just working on one half and mirroring her. So that's just something to keep in mind on future projects. If you want you could have her in a traditional T pose, work on her left side and then mirror it across to the right and that's going to save you some work. So that's just explaining why we're working on a pose model and not an unposed model. So back to where we were. We need to dictate where we're going to apply our fur um, and already in this scene I've set up a quick select set for her fur and her hair, just to speed things up a bit. So if we select this, you can see here we have the polygons already selected. So as you can see, if we zoom back out, 
Her lips and her nose aren't selected, neither are the inside of her ears, and underneath her dress isn't as well. There is a little bit of overlap of the polygons, but once we've got the fur applied we can paint out those, uh, those uh, strands of fur which pop through her dress. So with that selected we need to open the XGEM window and start to define our descriptions. Now you have a shelf of XGEN tools here, you also have an XGEN menu up here, either way is fine. So we're just going to click on this button here. Now the good thing about XGEN is it's very user friendly, so every step is explained in, well, in detail. In here you can see it tells you exactly the process that you're going to go through, and what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new description. We can give this description a name, so we'll call it Bunny Fur, maybe. And with every description, it's going to put that inside a collection. So if you've got a number of different descriptions on one character, you can put them all inside one collection. So they're all neatly um, collected and grouped just to make things easier. Uh, so we'll call this collection Easter Bunny maybe. So now down here we need to dictate what type of primitives we want to make. Splines, we're going to use and look at those later for creating her long hair. So we're not going to use those just now. Groomable splines, these are what we're going to apply now and they're just going to help us to apply a covering of fur which we can then go in and sculpt and play around with. You also have custom geometry, so you could physically import a model and then repeat that over the surface of her. So this could be good if you're working on... Um, it, I mean, it doesn't need, even need to be a character. It could be a landscape, like uh, Autodesk released a video demonstrating the use of XGen, but populating an area with trees. If it, if it was a bird, you could use it and bring in a, uh, a feather populate the character with that. So that's just for your custom geometry. And spheres and cards, these are both just similar to custom geometry, but obviously if you're using cards, you could maybe put an alpha map on there. Um, so it's a specific like texture type uh, approach. So for now, we're just going to use groomable, groomable splines. Click Create. There we go. And it comes up and tells you, use the grooming tools to help shape the primitives. So let's just zoom right in. What we can see now is we've got this covering of little yellow sticks. And they are basically all the guides which are going to sh sort of, well, they don't, they're not strictly exactly the same as the fur that is on her body. You have to think of these as guides, so they're influencing which way the fur is going to go. I'm just going to tear this window off here, just to make it a little bit bigger. Because these are the tools we're going to be using. So, down here, we're controlling these guides here. Basically, the initial view of these guides. So we can increase the density, but I'm not going to do that just now, because that'll just make create more guides... Um, and it may slow down your system. Uh, what I'm, I am going to do initially though is increase the length just so we can make them a bit more obvious. You can change the colour if you like but I'm going to leave them as yellow and already we can see there's some popping through the dress here. Now at the moment they're all just standing straight out from the skin which is not what we want. We want to be able to adjust the flow of those so they follow uh, the body in a bit more realistic manner. So we've adjusted the length. I'm not going to adjust the width or anything else like that. So let's close that down for now. And here we have the tools that I mentioned previously. If you are working in the T-pose, you could work on the left side and then flip whatever work you've done over to the right, or vice versa. You can also reset the, uh, the primitives back to this state as well and also clear them. But the tools we want are up here. And these act more like uh, your traditional sculpting tools. So you can use pose, width, length, etc. Uh, I'm just going to press control and space just to make this a little bit bigger just so we can see a bit better. 
Now what we're seeing here are the guides. We're not actually seeing the primitives which are going to be rendered. If we move over from our grooming menu for a second. So here we can control uh, the actual primitives themselves but nothing's being shown and that's because of this button here. We have to up every time we change something we have to update the preview. Now it's not set to update automatically for the fur because it could take a while to update and if after every brush stroke it's updating everything it could make your workflow really slow and stuttered. So what we're going to do is just going to click it initially let it work out what the fur should be like and then what we should see we've got some darker I'll just zoom in so these black ones here are the actual fur it's the actual fur itself this is what it's going to be rendered now we can change the density again to make it thicker fur we can scroll down here we can adjust how they flow over the polygons using these compensate normals um, options here uh, I would suggest the best thing to do with those is to turn them on and off and just see how they affect the actual flow of the fur so again after we've changed it we need to update it you see once you've done the initial generation it doesn't take as long so there you see the, the fur change slightly um, but again that's down to your model so I'd play around with those and just see just get a nice flow of the fur across the surface of your model. If we just quickly scroll down here and just have a very quick look at these now a lot of these you can control them through expressions. Now I'm not going to go into expressions for this particular tutorial because they're better for when you're using primitives because you can control the height, the length, the width and if and it, you you can get quite in depth with the scripts that you write and the expressions that you write to control those. For this tutorial or for this workshop for example we're just focusing on the fur and the hair so we don't really want the expressions. What we are going to look at is the taper values here. I mean we could adjust the length and the width but already we can see here that it's tied in to the groom tools here so we don't want to adjust those. But yes the taper at the moment the fur is quite thick and quite uniform. If we set the taper at the, at the end to 1 and then click our preview you can see now we're getting a nice point at the end so we can uh, we can play around with the actual look of the fur. We could also adjust where the taper begins so maybe it starts halfway up and there you see it's thicker at the base and it tapers off towards the end. So maybe we want something like that. So now again they're still just looking a bit like spikes sticking out of her so she's looking more like a cactus. We're not going to look at anything else down here for now. What we're going to do is we're just going to jump straight in and start grooming. So let's go to our grooming tools um, and I think what I'll do is I'm going to end this first video here, this basic introduction and we'll pick up in the next video and we'll just start uh, start sculpting or grooming this fur.